In the heart of the Amazon basin, nestled near the meandering waters of the Amazon River, the Tapoto tribe thrived. Their existence was a testament to the age-old hunting, gathering, and fishing skills, and the intricate knowledge of the medicinal plants that flourished in the lush Amazon jungle. Amongst them was Thiago Ricardo, a young shaman with an unquenchable curiosity for the uncharted herbs and plants that grew along the banks of the mighty Amazon River. On a scorching October morning, Tiago embarked on his daily quest to explore the bounties of nature hidden within the jungle's depths. His slender canoe glided gracefully along the serene waters, propelled by Tiago's skilled paddle strokes. Periodically, he would pause, carefully stepping out onto the swampy surface, his sharp eyes scanning the undergrowth for any sign of the elusive herbs he sought. After each excursion into the wilderness, he would return to his canoe, continuing his journey deeper into the heart of the Amazon. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, Tiago decided it was time to return to the tribe. The dense canopy overhead filtered the harsh sunlight, casting mottled shadows upon the river's surface. Tiago dipped his paddle into the water, its rhythmic splashes harmonizing with the chorus of the jungle. Little did he know that this ordinary day would soon become a life-or-death struggle against the unforgiving forces of nature. Without warning, a monstrous form lurked beneath the surface of the river. A colossal bull shark's dorsal fin slicing through the water surged upwards with terrifying force. The canoe was upended in an instant, sending Thiago tumbling into the murky depths of the Amazon. Panic coursed through him as he fought to regain his bearings. The bull shark, a relentless predator of the Amazon River, wasted no time closing the distance. With a swift, calculated strike, it clamped its razor-sharp jaws around Thiago's leg. Agonizing pain surged through him as he desperately grappled with the ferocious beast. The struggle was brutal, and Thiago's body bore the marks of a harrowing battle. Thiago managed to wrench himself free from the shark's grip in a final surge of determination. Blood clouded the water as he kicked towards the surface, his lungs aching for air. With a gasping breath, he broke through the surface, his injured leg throbbing with every movement. Bruised and battered, Thiago clung to the remains of his overturned canoe. He knew he had to reach the safety of the riverbank, but the path to survival would be treacherous. He gathered his remaining strength and began to swim towards the distant shore. The journey was a grueling test of endurance. Thiago's wounded leg slowed him down, and the relentless current of the Amazon River fought against his every stroke. The dense, unforgiving jungle on either side seemed impenetrable, but he knew he had no choice. Time passed slowly, marked only by the relentless jungle drone and the ceaseless pain radiating from his injuries. Inch by agonizing inch, Thiago made his way toward the riverbank. The air was humid and sweat mingled with his blood-soaked clothes. The infection began to set in, a cruel companion to his already dire circumstances. Despite the odds stacked against him, Tiago's determination burned brightly. His tribe, his people, and the knowledge of the medicinal plants he sought to protect fueled his relentless struggle. He couldn't allow himself to succumb to the tenacious grasp of the Amazon River. He pushed himself with all his might and reached the riverbank. He escaped the Amazon River, but now he was at the mercy of the Amazon's swampy jungle. The sun dipped below the canopy, casting long shadows across the water's surface. Darkness settled upon the jungle, and Thiago's strength waned with each passing moment as he limped. He knew he couldn't continue much longer. Every step on the wet surface of the jungle was an act of sheer will, every gasping breath a battle against the encroaching despair. But fate had a different plan that would not grant Thiago the mercy of salvation. As the night wore on, his strength finally failed him. The relentless infection, coupled with the exhaustion, proved too much for his battered body to bear. His steps grew weaker, his movements more sluggish, until he finally succumbed to the Amazon jungle's unforgiving embrace. With its myriad secrets and merciless beauty, the jungle claimed Thiago as its own. The river that had been his lifeblood became his final resting place. His journey, filled with hopes and dreams of preserving the knowledge of his tribe, ended in a cruel and lonely death. Two days passed before the tribe realized that Tiago had not returned. Concerned for their young shaman, they set out in search of him, following the same river that had taken him from them. The jungle, dense and unforgiving, yielded no immediate answers. 
Then amidst the tangled undergrowth, they discovered the remnants of Thiago's canoe. Their hearts sank as they realized the truth, but they pressed on, determined to find him. Their search led them to the riverbank, where they found the lifeless body of their beloved Thiago. The tribe mourned the loss of their young shaman, a guardian of their ancient knowledge. His passing was a stark reminder of the harsh and unpredictable environment they called home. In the Amazon, life and death danced an eternal, unforgiving tango. Tiago's legacy lived on in the hearts and minds of his people, who continued to rely on the skills he had passed down to them. They hunted, gathered, fished, and tended to their medicinal plants with a profound reverence for the natural world that sustained and took their beloved Tiago. In the heart of the Amazon basin, the Tipoto tribe endured, their connection to the jungle and its mysteries stronger than ever. And as they looked out upon the mighty Amazon River, they remembered Thiago Ricardo, the young shaman who had ventured into its depths in search of knowledge and never returned, a testament to the untamed beauty and relentless challenges of the Amazon. Copacabana Beach in Brazil was a picturesque stretch of coastline where the endless azure waters of the Atlantic met the golden sands. Here, Maria da Silva, a vibrant 16-year-old student with a deep love for the sea, often sought refuge from the demands of life on land. Her hobbies and passions revolved around the water, swimming, surfing, spending countless hours with her friends, sharing laughter and creating cherished memories. On a particularly sunny afternoon with the rhythmic sound of waves kissing the shore as her backdrop, Maria ventured into the inviting waters of Copacabana Beach. The turquoise expanse beckoned to her, and she eagerly embraced the refreshing embrace of the ocean. The sun warmed her skin, and her laughter mingled with the cries of seagulls overhead as she swam further from the shore. Maria found herself swimming further out as the afternoon sun descended towards the horizon. The waves were gentle, the water clear and inviting. She relished the feeling of weightlessness and freedom as she glided effortlessly through the salty embrace of the Atlantic. But beneath the shimmering surface, a silent predator lurked. Unbeknownst to Maria, a bull shark, an apex predator of these Brazilian waters, had ventured closer to shore than usual. It was drawn by the same allure of the ocean that Maria cherished, driven by instincts that knew no distinction between predator and prey. With a swift and stealthy movement, the bull shark closed the gap between them, its cold black eyes fixed on its unwitting target. In an instant, the tranquility of Maria's swim transformed into a nightmare. The shark's powerful jaws clamped down on her arm and shoulder, its serrated teeth tearing through flesh and bone. Maria's world was suddenly engulfed in a maelstrom of agony and terror. The wind carried away her screams for help, but her thrashing and panic were undeniable signals of distress. These frantic movements caught the attention of a group of vigilant lifeguards stationed along the beach, reacting with a sense of urgency from a deep understanding of the sea's dangers. The lifeguards sprang into action. They raced towards the scene, their tanned bodies cutting through the sand with purpose. In synchronized coordination, they retrieved rescue equipment. They made their way into the water, driven by the need to save a life. Maria's ordeal continued beneath the waves as the bull shark refused to release its grip. But the lifeguards, armed with experience and training, reached her side. They pried the shark's jaws with remarkable bravery and composure, forcing it to relinquish its prey. The struggle between humans and nature raged, but the lifeguard's determination prevailed. Amidst the chaos, Maria was pulled from the water, her body trembling and her spirit nearly broken. The lifeguards acted swiftly, applying first aid to staunch the blood flow from her grievous wounds. Their quick thinking and calm professionalism were the difference between life and death in this critical moment. With Maria's life hanging in the balance, they carried her limp form back to the safety of the shore. The onlookers, who had been enjoying the idyllic day at the beach just moments before, watched in silent shock as the drama unfolded. Maria's friends, who had been frolicking in the waves nearby, gathered around her, their faces etched with fear and concern. Awaiting the ambulance's arrival, the lifeguards continued to stabilize Maria. Her injuries were severe and the pain must have been excruciating, but her will to survive was unbroken. The lifeguards did their best to provide comfort and reassurance. 
their faces grim with the knowledge that every passing moment was crucial. The ambulance arrived with a sense of urgency that mirrored the gravity of the situation. Maria was carefully loaded onto a stretcher, her pallor stark against the beach's white sands. With sirens wailing, the ambulance raced through the narrow streets of Seraph to the hospital that held the promise of salvation. Upon arrival at the hospital, a team of skilled surgeons and medical professionals awaited Maria's arrival. They had been briefed on the extent of her injuries and were prepared for the daunting task ahead. Time was of the essence, and they wasted no moment in taking her into the operating room. Hours passed, marked by the steady beat of machines and the hushed conversations of medical staff. Maria's parents, who had been notified of the tragic event, waited anxiously in a dimly lit waiting room. Their faces were etched with worry, their hands clasped, silently praying for their daughter's survival. The surgical team worked tirelessly inside the operating room to repair the damage caused by the bull shark's attack. It was a delicate and intricate procedure requiring skill and precision. The hours felt like an eternity as they fought to save Maria's life and salvage what they could of her arm and shoulder. As the first light of dawn crept over the horizon, the surgery was completed. The team emerged from the operating room, their expressions a mixture of exhaustion and hope. Maria had survived the harrowing ordeal but paid a heavy price. Her arm had been amputated, a sacrifice made to ensure her survival. This incident left an unerasable mark on Maria's body and soul. She would never forget this day. Perhaps she would not be able to swim again. In 1939, in the bustling city of New Orleans, along the meandering banks of the mighty Mississippi River, lived a young man named Jeffrey Brown. He was a diligent worker, earning his livelihood as a waiter in a restaurant perched on the river's eastern shore. Jeffrey's life followed a predictable routine that was both mundane and comforting. Each morning, he embarked on a short journey to his workplace. The Mississippi River served as a natural divide. Jeffrey took a small ferry that ferried passengers from the west shore to the east. The slow chug of the ferry's engine became the backdrop to his daily commute, a journey he had grown accustomed to over the years. The restaurant where he worked was a popular spot frequented by locals and visitors. Jeffrey was known for his friendly demeanor and quick service, making him a favorite among the patrons. It was a modest existence, but gave him a sense of purpose and a steady income. One evening, after a long and tiring day at the restaurant, Jeffrey boarded the ferry for the return trip to the West Shore, where his home awaited him. The day had taken its toll on him, and fatigue weighed heavily upon his shoulders. He settled near the edge of the ferry's grill, his exhaustion causing him to slouch as he gazed out at the darkening waters of the Mississippi River. Unbeknownst to Jeffrey, the tranquil surface of the river concealed an ominous presence. A creature of primal instinct and power, a bull shark, lay in wait beneath the depths. As the ferry made its unhurried progress across the river, the shark sensed an opportunity, and with a lightning-quick burst of speed, it lunged from the depths. The attack was brutal and swift. Jeffrey's arm became trapped in the shark's razor-sharp jaws. The predator's relentless strength tore through flesh and bone in a terrifying moment. Agonizing pain radiated from his mangled arm, and he let out a scream that reverberated through the ferry, sending shockwaves of terror through the passengers. The ferry operator, alert to the sudden chaos unfolding on board, wasted no time. With a heart pounding in fear and urgency, he pushed the boat's engine to its full speed, leaving behind a turbulent wake as the ferry raced towards the west shore. Panic swept over the passengers, but there was no time for anything but escape. The journey across the river felt like an eternity, every moment filled with dread and desperation. The passengers huddled together, their faces contorted with fear as they prayed for safety. In the distance, the lights of the west shore grew steadily brighter, a beacon of hope amidst the darkness. Finally, the ferry reached the safety of the riverbank. With relief, the passengers rushed to disembark, their survival an outcome they had not dared to take for granted. Among them, Jeffrey Brown, his arm hanging in tatters, was carried to the shore by sympathetic strangers. An ambulance was summoned, and with sirens wailing, Jeffrey was rushed to the nearest hospital. His life hung in the balance as skilled medical professionals worked tirelessly to stabilize him. His arm, however, was beyond saving, and in a sad and solemn procedure, 
it was amputated to prevent further complications. The relentless attack of the bull shark had irrevocably altered Jeffrey's life. The job that had provided him with his daily bread and a sense of purpose was now out of reach, and his future was uncertain. The restaurant where he had once been a beloved fixture seemed a world away. Recovery was a long and painful process, both physically and emotionally. Jeffrey grappled with losing his arm, a stark reminder of the fateful evening on the Mississippi River. He faced the daunting challenge of rebuilding his life and finding new purpose and meaning in a world that had suddenly become much harsher. Jeffrey's spirit remained unbroken despite the darkness that had descended upon him. With time and determination, he learned to adapt to his new reality. He underwent physical therapy to regain his strength and mobility, and he found solace in the support of friends and family who stood by his side throughout his journey to recovery. In time, Jeffrey discovered a new passion and purpose. He became an advocate for shark conservation, using his own harrowing experience to raise awareness about the importance of protecting these misunderstood creatures and their fragile ecosystems. His story served as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the capacity to find strength and purpose, even in the face of life-altering adversity. Jeffrey Brown's name became synonymous with courage and determination in New Orleans as the years passed. He had survived the worst day of his life, and in doing so, he had not only found a way to heal, still, he had also become a beacon of inspiration for others facing their challenges. The Mississippi River, once a source of solace and routine, had thrust him into the depths of despair. Still, his unwavering spirit had carried a purposeful future ahead. The Brisbane River in Australia was a place of serene beauty, where the gentle currents lapped against the shores and the sun painted the waters with shimmering hues. It was here that Andre Juarez, a seasoned fisherman, found solace and joy in the simple act of casting his line into the river's depths. Fishing was more than a hobby for Andre. It was a way of life, a connection to the natural world that ran deep in his veins. Andre, a rugged man with weathered hands that told the story of countless days spent on the river, cherished his moments of solitude with the water. Yet he also found immense joy in sharing this passion with his family and friends. The river was a place of bonding where stories were exchanged, laughter echoed, and the camaraderie of those who loved the outdoors thrived. On a clear and sunny day, the Brisbane River glistens like a jewel under the Australian sun. He loaded his fishing gear onto his small boat, a vessel with its fair share of adventures, and pushed off from the shore. The rhythmic sound of his oars breaking the water's surface was music to his ears. The day held promise, and Andre felt a familiar anticipation as he cast his line into the river. The fishing was good, and he reveled in the peaceful rhythm of the river. Time seemed to stretch as he lost himself in the ebb and flow of the water, the gentle bobbing of his boat, and the promise of the catch. As the sun slowly descended towards the horizon, casting long shadows across the river, Andre's senses were suddenly jolted by a powerful force beneath the surface. Without warning, a massive bull shark, a formidable predator of the Australian waters, surged upwards, jaws agape, and clamped its teeth around Andre's leg. Pain seared through Andre's body as he grappled with the shocking reality of the attack. In an instant, his world had transformed from one of tranquility to one of chaos and terror. The shark's grip was relentless, and with a swift, savage motion, it severed an artery in Andre's leg. Blood poured into the water, dying at a deep crimson, and Andre knew that his life hung in the balance. Summoning every ounce of strength and willpower, Andre managed to wrench his leg free from the shark's grasp. He kicked and thrashed, fighting to stay afloat in the water as he bled profusely. Desperation gripped him as he swam towards the shore, his vision growing dim and his consciousness slipping away. In those critical moments as Andre's life teetered on the edge, a group of kayakers happened upon the harrowing scene. Their shouts and gasps of horror filled the air as they witnessed the bloodied fishermen struggling in the water. They wasted no time acting swiftly and decisively to save a risky life. One of the kayakers, a quick-thinking individual with a first aid kit, improvised a tourniquet, binding it tightly above the wound on Andre's leg. The makeshift tourniquet stemmed the flow of blood. With the help of others, they carefully lifted the injured fisherman into one of the kayaks. 
With every paddle stroke, they raced against time, the situation's urgency etched on their faces. The nearest hospital was their destination, and they knew that Andre's survival depended on reaching medical help as quickly as possible. Andre's world faded in and out of consciousness as the kayakers pushed forward, their efforts fueled by a shared determination to save a life. He was vaguely aware of their reassuring voices, encouragement, and unwavering resolve. Hours later, they arrived at the hospital, where a team of skilled medical professionals stood ready to receive Andre. His condition was critical, and he was rushed into surgery. The shark's brutal attack had left its mark, and the amputation of Andre's leg was a painful necessity to save his life. Andre's recovery was marked by physical and emotional challenges in the following days. The loss of his leg was a profound change that tested his resilience and spirit. Yet he was not alone on this journey. His family, friends, and the kayakers who had saved his life stood by his side, providing unwavering support and encouragement. With time, Andre adapted to life with a prosthetic leg. It was a testament to his determination and the indomitable spirit that had carried him through the darkest moments. He returned to the Brisbane River, not as a fisherman, but as a survivor, a man who had faced the relentless jaws of nature and emerged with a renewed appreciation for life. Once a place of solace and joy, the river remained a part of Andre's life. He continued to explore its waters, not as an escape from reality, but as a reminder of the strength within him. The Brisbane River had tested him, but it had also shown him the power of human resilience and the bonds of camaraderie that could be forged in the face of adversity. Andre Juarez's story became one of inspiration, a testament to the unwavering human spirit and the capacity to overcome any danger and worst situation.